record that I, I was showing you yesterday in um, Cleveland, Ohio, 1951. I'm loving it. I'm crying. Yeah. That what can you tell me about it? Because you told, you told me at dinner last night. Yeah, well, it was a, it was a, it was a very good album. I had some very good musicians. I had a boy, Jazz Ferguson, and Neil Green on the saxophone, and I don't remember the rhythm section. Uh, oh, yeah, I had a, oh, what the hell is a boy named? He did, well, just over here with Louis Jordan. He was my drummer. Bass player, Artie Mosby. Yeah, I've got, I've got the name. I can't remember the name. I don't remember the name, but I do remember Jazz Ferguson and Neil Green was my two saxophones. And uh, and Terry Tillman, and we had uh, Floyd Hunt was up there too on the session, and, and I did a uh, I'm crying and really the, got the blues and Tijuana, six things like Tijuana, yeah. Tijuana, you took me on the back. And what was the what was the premium company? The premium was a a, a continuation uh, from a miracle. Some of the same, the same people, you know, the, the, prim, the premium, and then, uh, then later, it, part of it became the United. Hi, became United, aren't you? All that was uh, the same people. It was all in there. And you said after this, you had uh, you had a link up with films after this. Mm -hmm. And then you, last night, you you were telling me you had a link up with the with film people. So who who else recorded the song? Oh, uh, no, I, Jimmy Wakely and Margaret Brighton did the song. They, they, they were two big movie stars, still are, I guess, you know. They did I'm Crying. A lot of more of the country western singers, that's what the song really was, you know, more or less. I played in a, I played a town in Monroe, Louisiana, and the white man came in his, in his car, him and his wife, and he had all the jukeboxes, so, you know. And, you know, in those days, they just, he just spoke like the, what to come out of mind, what he said. He said, I, he, he wouldn't come in, he, he asked me to come out. I came out to the car and I sat down in the car with him, sitting in the back, saw him and the wife. He said, I just want to come by and have a tarry that you. You're, you're the first nigga that had ever been on my jukebox and I like that song. <laughs> he, he said, I, and I don't know why niggas don't sing more songs like that, you know, because that's a very good damn song, and my wife liked it, and I liked it. I just come by here to congratulate you, <laughs> you know, and I want to thank you very much. Good, good. Oh, so that was a success. That's what I'm crying. That was the song. Crying. And that was a success on white jukeboxes in Louisiana in the 1950s. White. That was just, that was that went what they call pop now. I guess <laughs> <laughs> that one went pop because we had a hell of a tour behind that. Are you on? You're on tour. We played, I remember in New Orleans, we played two theaters in one day. Play one show there, jump in the car, then run to another theater and do another show. God, great. We were touring like mad. And even that sound, that Play, sound from we, Chicago was... The theater probably... tour, and this is the hardest tour you could ever do. I don't guess, I don't know, no, they don't do it no more, I'm sure they don't. We, the theater tour, theater tour consists of you, your last show maybe about two midnight. And the next town could be 300 miles, but the first show was one o'clock. We had uh, because so I had the band, and we had a, a tap dance group. Had a comedy to do group, and uh, and I had to go to terrorism. Then we had the, the uh, oh god, what is the group name? Oh, I can't remember the name now. But they made a song called Mint Julep, and a lot of. I, could, uh, yeah. I can definitely find out, you know, those are the kind of things yeah. that you, know, yeah. stuff you get you stuff going on and you find out. <clears throat> that's, the, that's, the, that's what the show consists of. And you had the tap we dancers had a, and comedy? We had a master summer, which was uh, also a comic, you know, and we had a, had a hell of a show. We were, oh, so uh, yeah, package. It was a package. No, because when you say, when you say, you know, playing a concert now, we think, ah, you had a band, and then you know instead of instead of saying like you think it's something like last night yeah no, no it was we, it was a full we package playing, we, we were doing the theaters only theaters uh cinemas you know cinemas you get out and come and they show the movie and then you go back after the movie and things like that ah, and tap dancing was still popular then in the 50s huh? right? the dancing you know jazz dancing was yeah still it popular was very popular then that's a lost art that really should come that's back that's gone hasn't it yeah. it really is like the blues 
Yeah, it's completely gone, hasn't it? What was his name? Boogaloo? Boogaloo? I can't remember his name. There was a very good book about jazz dancing, you know. It's, I saw two young kids in uh, in New Orleans, in the um, in the street. And one of these kids was so beautiful good, to watch it. They got one good dancer over here, Jimmy Sly. I don't know if you've seen him. He's in France. He's in Paris. I haven't seen him. He's a very good tap dancer, but he's not one of the best. They got some hell of ones there, you know. But it used to be amazing. It used to, it used to be people with uh, with Duke Ellington, with all the orchestras and so on, didn't it? Yeah. Completely they, disappeared. They, they were all bad helms, you know. I see. That was... Uh, we had the, the, the group I had were called Chuck and Chuckles. Chuck and Chuckles. <laughs> <laughs> and they were good. They could dance. Oh, yeah. And you put the package together? No, a guy named Spizzy Canfield. He was a black guy. Lived in Canada. He was more American, but he was living in Canada. He didn't want to put the package together. And he lived in Canada and he put the package together in Canada. Should, yeah, he put and put the package together. But he was American. He was from New York or somewhere. I he, I see. So when he used to come down to Chicago, did he put the things together and do all the bookings? And yeah. He, well, the, he come from, he, they all came from everywhere. And, uh, some came from New York, some came from uh, the, 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 what was the name of the group. The group, they came from Washington. And you know my singer, she came from uh, Cleveland. From so, she was she was from Cleveland. Yeah. And, uh, oh, they, you know, they were from everywhere. And how many theaters would you do in a tour? Well, we did. Um, we started out in Pittsburgh. In Pittsburgh, in Pittsburgh, and we worked all the way to New Orleans. Grief. I don't know how many theaters we did, but we did many of them. Yeah. We did a lot of theaters. And that'd be what two months, two and a half months. Or yeah, half. about two months. And that's how you lost. Uh, that's how you lost the Eagle House Rockers because the fellows. No, no, that, <laughs> wasn't, women. that wasn't it. it that no, wasn't but the women saying you can't uh, go away yeah, for two months. Yeah. You, know, yeah, you can understand that. Too. That's how I lost my singer, Terry Tillman, because we had the song out and we were hitting everybody was digging it. You know, we were playing it everywhere. You know, so all the, the vultures, I call them, were following us up and everything, trying to get me to let them publish in my tune, and they were trying to sweet talk her to sign her up. But she couldn't try me because I had on a personal contract, you know. So she kept begging, kept begging, so she said, you know, I, you know, you get mad, so I said, go ahead. And then they, then that they was the end of it. That was the end of it with the, uh, with the thing, yeah. And I, and I was too, too big, my big headed to, to let her come back, so I wouldn't accept her when she wanted to come back. Mm -hmm. Because you were saying about the majors sort of blocking the independence, wasn't it? There was yeah. a big war at the, um, in the beginning, wasn't it? Oh, so many. And then of course on those tours there were so many there were so many musicians who were who were killed in car crashes and so on. You know, uh -huh. So many musicians killed in car crashes and this thing travelling every day and travelling overnight and so on. Yeah. I remember I remember reading some sort of you know, reading through things and six names came up. And every one of the fellows was the killed whole in the band car was in Florida, in the Keys, you know, going to watch Florida down, in the yeah. Keys. They ran off the highway and and the whole band drowned. And and they were imposters. They were called Memphis Living the House Rocker. And and uh cause the union called my house and they heard it on the radio and asked my wife about it and she almost had a heart attack, you know. But she said, No, it can't be because he just I said, Well no, it wasn't him because he just left here this morning or last night or something. I don't think I came home that night or something. But they they got drowned, Memphis Slim and House Rocker. And that was they were imposters. Yeah. We had a lot of that. There was a little guy that was all down in New Orleans called himself Little Walter. <laughs> Man, he would play that placard out, sound, Little Walter. Little Walter caught that cat boy and made him change his name and take his placard out. <laughs> little Walter, Little Walter almost killed that guy. <laughs> <laughs> but was the union efficient about these kind of things? Huh? Was the union efficient about these kind of things? It would be difficult to control, surely. It was difficult to control, to control because nobody had the name Patton. Uh, you could stop it, you know, because like Memphis Slim and the House Rockers, they could nobody use Memphis Slim, you know, everybody, everybody didn't want them to. But they did it. <laughs> Quite a few people did I, I went to 31st Street and they, I just said, my Memphis Slim won't say, you're goddamn lie, you're not Memphis Slim, I know Memphis Slim. I said, okay, baby. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What is that? I never could get my throat cut trying to prove who I am. <laughs> you know, about 
Six, seven months later, she come and begged me all kind of partners. We got drunk behind it. She said, yeah. Boy, I, knew, I knew the boy from Memphis. Playing all of my stuff and telling people he was Memphis Slim. Playing them house parties. They ain't getting drunk. He had a good thing going. I saw him when I was in Chicago this time. We talked about it. He laughed about it. <laughs> <laughs> we laugh about it. Yeah, just know. living on your, you're living on your name and playing the music is kind of. I really had, I really enjoyed myself this time in the states. It's funny, you know. But you hadn't been back for a long time. No. Not been, I've been back, but just uh, more or less on business trip and right in and right out or something like that. And uh, quickly, uh, uh, oh, it was really a uh, more or less emergency trip. Well, I went to, I went back in '65. I went to Newport. '66, yeah. I went to Monterey. But I didn't see any people there. I'm only Muddy Water because we were on the same ticket together mm -hmm. in, uh, in in California. But that, then, but when I like when I went to Chicago and Memphis on my own, yeah, you know, yeah. with time, you know, I enjoy myself. And especially with my kids, they all grown and see things quite different, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah beautiful. beautiful. Really reminiscent as well. But I'm surprised you said that you went to. Um, that you went to the Apollo in Harlem because I thought you, I thought you said once, you know, you'd never ever go back near Harlem, you know, it was too, <laughs> too wild, been, you know. Yeah. Well, Harlem is, all, you know, you can go to Harlem. I mean, a lot of people. Well, it's, it's dangerous. It's even dangerous for the black man to go to Harlem, actually, you know. First place is the bad thing about it is you can't get transportation <laughs> up there hardly, you know. Because no cab driver will ever take you. No cab driver wants to take you to Harlem. Uh, you can get out of Harlem, but getting in Harlem, you've got a problem. Even the black cab drivers don't want to go to Harlem. Th those that work, you know, downtown. Yeah. So you got a problem going to Harlem. And you can't, you can't go on the, uh, you can't go on the subway. Can't uh, you Mickey Baker, when he went there, he went <coughs> rented a car. You know, he went, he rented a car and went to Harlem, and he come out all the time. <laughs> and the wheels was off of it. <laughs> and the man said, "Man, if you'd have told me you're going to Harlem, we wouldn't even rent you the damn car." <laughs> he come out into the flat car, sitting there with no damn wheels on it. <laughs> because Mickey was from New York, wasn't he? Uh huh. Mickey's from New York. Yeah. Was he born in By the way of Louisiana. By the way of Louisiana. By yeah. me, by the way of uh, Kentucky, no. from Louisville. Ah, he's from Louisville, yeah. Yeah, I see. But he worked a lot for Savoy, didn't he? He was the, he was the house musician for Savoy, wasn't he? Yeah, he was the a and man for, for, uh, for uh, Atlantic, too. Ah, for Atlantic as well? Yeah. I didn't realize that. He did a lot of work with the guy. Because all, all called, they were they were fellow like Sticks McGee and all these people, weren't they? Yeah. Sonny Italian Brownie McGee and yeah, well, he was, Bull City Red and all these fellas. He did on uh, the Chuck Willis and all these people too. Was he with Chuck Willis? Yeah, he did all these, a lot of these guys. Even uh, uh, this uh, saxophone player, this guy, look, uh, oh, no, no, hell of a saxophone, got killed in New York in his apartment. Well, anyway, Mickey Baker did. He recorded a lot of those guys. And what about Chuck Willis? Is Chuck, Chuck Willis still there? Uh, Chuck Willis is dead. He's dead, isn't he? Yeah. Died it. very young. I mean, I, that's right. He, yeah. Now they now they come to mention it because he was important as well, wasn't he? All kinds of things he did. Huh? All kinds of things he did. He was, a, he, was he was at the height, and when he died, you know, he just wouldn't stop drinking. He had ulcers already, and he wouldn't stop. I saw him in Florida, you know. He had, he had his ulcers, but he couldn't lay off that bottom. And that was, yeah. That was it. What was the scene like in Florida? He had a writer, right? too. Yeah, lots of things would, uh, and that kind of stuff was only just coming out now. Because, you know, the, the stuff that was reissued about the blues has always been sort of Mississippi. And uh, the whole yeah. range of black music. They got down. all that stuff, but they got so much money. They don't want to do don't anything, don't want to know. Damn. They don't care, really. Don't yeah. want to know. They don't care. Because we've been trying for years to, to, to get Ruth Brown, you know. Atlantic sitting on that. Yeah, just can't hear great. it. She, she killed her own self. She, want to, she didn't want to be a blues singer. Mm. She mentioned that she wanted to sing <laughs> songs like uh, Ella Fitzgerald and Sarah Vaughan and things. Yeah, and then they did just, you know. Because I got hold of, um, I got hold of a record on King with uh, Ruth Brown singing spirituals. And I found that I found that in uh, in New Orleans, you know, digging around kind of thing. I heard something about Ruth Brown. I heard she's trying to make a comeback or she's something. She's trying to make a comeback. Yeah, yeah. she made a record, yeah. made a record. But all the stuff they've got, I mean, Atlantic's got that stuff. And yeah, Atlantic really got some stuff on it. Yeah. They'll but never Warren ever do Baker, it. Ruth yeah. Brown, and this girl, uh, Lula Reed. Yeah. Faye Adams. 
for Adams, yeah. And now, I'm sure you, now you could sell that stuff, you know. Yeah, you sell it now. There's interest, because there's interest in the well, name. Well, you could sell the stuff, you sell artists too, over here, once the stuff came out. Yeah. You, but as you said, they're not interested, are they? Because they've got so much cash, they just they got, got so much money. they got they got a big place in Paris, you know. Yeah. They all emerge, Warner Brothers, Atlantic, and all of them. They just, all they do is produce hits. That's right, that yeah. come out of America, they produce, reproduce them here. Yeah. But then yeah. they don't want to be bothered with it. No, no, because if they, if they don't sell less than, you know, they sell less than two million copies and he's not interested in it. You know? Yeah, Art Erdogan, you know, he told Johnny Griffin, said, just do your thing, you know, you help us, you started out with us, you know, when we started out. Just do what you want to do and I, I'm, I'm with you 100%. Oh, that's, yeah. That's we have money, it's way high, Yeah, that's all right. Yeah. There are a couple of, couple of books out now about um, about Atlantic and all the things that went on. The only reason I didn't go with Atlantic, they wanted me very bad. They, they, they flew me to New York and had me in there, but they had about five, four or five big, big white cats sitting around, and they said, uh, yeah, we're going to do wonders for you. This is your road man, and this is your personal man. I said, wait a minute. <laughs> well, where the hell am I? You know, <laughs> and I would sign them. They were mad. They were mad. And, so look, man, you know, if you want me to sign a record contract with you or something like that and we get a deal, I'm sorry, but you don't tell me who's my manager, because I don't want no manager, because I've seen the Clovers, that's the group I tell about them with the song. The Clovers. Uh, Are you the Clovers? Huh? They're nice. They was on there. Because I saw, what I seen with the Clovers, you know, the, they had the manager. And the manager, I had to tell him, I said, man, the manager, come on, you got I said, what the hell's going on, man? He said, that's how I was mad. I said, but your manager's not your boss, you're his boss. He don't, you don't have his manager. They couldn't understand that. The black musicians could never understand that. They put a white man with him. He said, man, these guys running, hollering. I said, man, you paying this guy, you know. Mm-hmm. And this is this is why I could never have a manager because, you know, I mean, I had to holler at like Fast Domino. Fast Domino was manager to watch his feet. I saw this, you know, get that, get, get the watch paint, my feet tired. <laughs> but anyway, the man ended up a millionaire. <laughs> He didn't give a damn. He get that money. <laughs> but that's me. I, you know, hell. Yeah, no, but sure. The, the nobody, thing about, I would let nobody push me around my music. No, God. And you know, and this is the, the great thing. That's why you're still here. Huh? <laughs> that's why you're still here. That's right. And this is this is the great thing. This is what I admire by myself. Cause everything happened to me, I did it my way. I didn't have yeah. no help. I did it myself. Cause I didn't go along with the program. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I pushed my way on through. On my own. Right now, the, everything I do now is just between my wife and I. She has all the business and I do. It's the best way, isn't it? It'd be the only way, isn't it? Because surely, if they give you, if they give you four people, you've got to pay them. All that comes out of your money, doesn't it? Right. That's just Atlantic getting back that money. Surely. Yeah, the guy flew to. Uh, I can't think. Then he's the manager. Uh, 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 I can't even name boy. I've been mean, yeah, here yeah, so long. Do. I can't think of even names at all. A big star in America, girl, black star. He flew all the way to London to try to sign me up. And then I heard, overheard him talking to some of the guys we were recording. He said, yeah, I said, Della Reese. Della Reese. He said, yeah, I said, uh, it didn't cost me to come over here. Uh, uh, Della Reese paid for it. I just tell him we were trying to get her some concerts and things like that, and she had to pay. See, this is in the contract manager. Everything that he did for your benefit, you pay for it. If he wants to fly to... If, if he from here wants to fly to California, he says that I'm flying to try to get some work for Memphis Slim, so that comes out of Memphis Slim's money. Mm-hmm. No, no, no. Yeah, but that's, uh, that's, only, that's only part of the way that people have been exploited. That's, that's only, only part, part of it, it Yeah, it? that's only a minor part of it, too. Yeah, minor part, yeah. Yeah, because they all, all these people end up millionaire. All of these, all of these managers and roadmen and things they end up with all the money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and the music, you know, Mind you, it's not even finished. I mean, for example, the Beatles, Lennon and McCartney, John Lennon's broke. Is it? What? All the rights, you know, all the, all, all the rights for all, all the Lennon and McCartney songs, they belong to a television company in England. You saw them too? Uh, no, but they got them, you know. Yeah. <coughs> and one of the fellows, he, he used broke. to... I can't find no, he gets, he, gets a, he gets a salary. He gets a fixed salary from the... ATV television company in England. Yeah. Because what they did, they floated a public company, you know. They're trying to, to make Apple a public yeah. company, which was going to be a big thing and so on. Well, he the lawyers. Away a fixed salary, that's a good Asian hole. Yeah, but, but, every time, every, every, but every time you put the word radio on, you've got Lennon and McCartney songs, and that money isn't going to them. <coughs> no. 
and the Rolling Stones only did uh, with Decca. They got their, um, you know, that big ar argument last year about early records that they but made. But you know who had the first record, record on the Beatles? VJ. <laughs> Was it VJ? VJ let this thing slip right through their hand. They had the first record on, on the first record on the Beatles. Black record company in Chicago. And you said it go. Vivian and VJ, I got some things on VJ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they had, they had a, 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 a session on the Beatles. I think they must have did it in Germany or something. That's right, they were in Germany, yeah. that's right. Yeah. And, they and, and they sold it before they knew what was going on. They were silly, they were silly yeah. girls. I used to tell, make me some mad, a guy named Jimmy and Abner. Abner's with Motown, now Jimmy's dead. He, he couldn't stand it, he, when they went broke. He, <laughs> hell, he just couldn't stand it, he could live in that big town. They were really silly, he sat back behind his desk and you know, they didn't know what the hell was going on. I remember once he he said that his Abner he didn't like blues he was one of those uh, um, Ivy League cats you know one of those tight pants little tight things and he and he didn't particularly care for the blues and he was the president of the company they made him president uh, unfortunately and uh, he uh, he swapped John Lee Hooker to Riverside for Johnny Griffith. And Jimmy said, man, you got to be out of your goddamn mind, man. The blue oh, boy, Johnny Hooker, is a natural. He swapped it. He swapped it. Yeah. Because then on Riverside, he made things with acoustic guitar, didn't he? And he made, he made all kinds of things. And then just... Yeah. Cool. Well, it's amazing. Blue. Amazing. But as you say, it's a, it's a business that like... Yeah, it's business. Because he's... It, it, see, it, it, that's... that's uh, well, uh, you know, it's the thing about the, the white man, he... But see... The thing is, because we don't really think about the future. No, that's that's, no, no, that's no, our no, problem no, no, in no, the black no, no. We don't think about the future. Right now. The white man, he buy up all his damn stuff. He, uh, even he knows that he won't live to even say but he think about his family, his family's family. We don't think like that. And that's, that's uh, you know, that's bad for our, our part on our part. You know, yeah, give yeah. it to me. But I think I think for musicians as well, when they when they start and so on, you know, it's. Yeah, you you, you like, can't you can't think how big it's going to be. You can't. No, you, you, know? you, you well. Think about it. You know, for for musicians like me, I've been around. I've seen so many of them. I've seen them go this way, and and they, they and went this way. They passed me going, and they passed me coming back. You know, and I've been right in the on the level now. But you see, if, if if you make a if you make a record, and it becomes a hit, there's nobody can tell you anything. Yeah. I mean, if, if you haven't paid your dues. Now, if you scuffle and scuffle for years and years and then make a hit, you know what it is. But if you get right into it in your first record a hit, you know you're going to be blowing like Roy Brown. I remember his, he made a hit, man. And he had, he spent so much money, man. He had a, he had a chauffeur, and the chauffeur must wear his cap, and on the cap he had up that Roy Brown chauffeur. <laughs> and, and he used to buy tubs of whiskey and things and, and the concert and things like that. He spent money like it when I started. And all of a sudden, boom. He just went what the hell happened. And he was really big, wasn't he? He didn't know what happened. Now, guys, uh, and even Chuck Berry, he blew all his money. But now, uh, when I saw him in Paris, he making a comeback. He says, I know what to do with my money now. Yeah, he's, doing, yeah. he's got a country club, hasn't he? Somewhere near St. Louis. Huh? He's got a country club near St. Louis. Know. He's got property yeah. and all kinds of things. I know he, you know. They, they make that second comeback, they know what to do. They know what to do then, yeah. But if they wait a long time before they get it, they know what to do with it. But yeah. if they get it right away, I mean, that goes from only the, only the, the, the white boys are a little more smart. They just get in it for the money. They say, I'm going to get in here and I'm going to make me some money and I'm going to go into another business or something. And they do that. Yeah, yeah make it go. Well, they got the support too, you know. We don't have the support they have, no. unfortunately. We don't have it. Yeah, but all those white kids who make money, they're making money with black music. That's right. Oh, we don't have to support. Oh, because when, uh, with Chuck Berry, for example, when he came out of jail, when was it, in 60, 61, 62, the Beatles, he found out all his music was being played all over the world, wasn't it? Because with rock and roll, Chuck Berry and, wasn't known in England. And Little Richard, Chuck Berry, and Fast Domino, Fast Domino, he, he should never have to work no more. No. I, I was in California in 58 or 59, I went to the record company, and he had, they had 17 gold records on the wall of Fast Domino. Yeah. But he's, uh, he's still playing, isn't he? I saw him in the summer, Las yeah, Vegas. I saw him, him in the summer. He was playing there and, uh, yeah. you know.
Yeah, he shouldn't. He should never have to work no more. But but he lost a lot of money in Vegas. That's why he's in Vegas all the time. He gambles, eh? Yeah, he, he owed a million dollars out there. So they, so it was uh, written. But he, I think he paid it off or something. You know, yeah, that's if the you, way they, you, that's the you, way they get you. You know, they uh, they get a lot of them like that. I know a lot of a few more recent blues singers are tied up like that now. That's the way the mafia get over to you. Yeah, they get you out there and they let you win, and then, and then they get you. They get you sunk, man, for some thousands and thousands of dollars. Then they control you. Yeah. No, because if you own a million dollars with fellas like that, I want to you, get you, out you, there. <laughs> I want to get out there. I want to let me win one time. And, <laughs> and, 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 oh no, I don't quit gambling. They might like, kill me. <laughs> That's a problem. Later. Yeah, they probably end up shooting me. But it's a wild place. Is a uh, because Presley, when he was on the, when he was on stage, you know, he's fat and so on. He, he walks five things. Has to sit down. And, <gasps> he's like this, and he had eighteen singers with him. Four behind, huh? And he. Beautifully done. They must have done it. They must have worked on it for months, you know. And every time he opens his mouth, they make his, they make him wider. They make the sound wider. They make the sound go up, and he can't get up there. And of course, the people behind just take him up. And it sounds, and it's beautifully done, you know. It's just like a big amplifier. Eighteen. Yeah, he's 18. very sick. You know, he was very sick anyway. Yeah. He's from Memphis. No, you are he's from not Memphis, from Memphis. He's from Mississippi, actually. Is he from Mississippi? Oh, yeah. He was a truck driver in Memphis. Wasn't he's, he? he's from. Um, mm, uh, uh, what's the little Mississippi? It's out of, it's not far from Memphis, but that's where he's from. He was a truck driver, wasn't he? I don't know what he was. Yeah, he was a truck driver. I got a beautiful home in Memphis. He got yeah, a street right. name after him now. It was Preston Boulevard. <laughs> I saw him when I was there. Uh, yeah. Mind you, the early stuff I liked, you know, I mean, I liked so the, uh, the Sam Phillips stuff. But of course, you left, you, you left long before Sam Phillips ever, ever started, didn't you? Late forties, he, he was. He yeah. did. Um, what did he do? He did quite. He did Rufus Thomas, didn't he? It was the first first huh? Rufus Thomas thing he did. They did um, in Memphis. Sam Phillips. Then he did Arthur Crudup, Big Boy Crudup. Big Boy Crudup, and then um, that was forty six, wasn't it? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Rufus Thomas. He's dead, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. He made some things in England, and uh, oh, he was nice. You know, he, came, he saw him a couple of times in England. And, Playing guitar or something. But the only thing about these guys, including myself, back in back in back in those days when they recorded, we didn't really know what we were doing. Nobody wouldn't tell us that really knew, you know. And uh, Melrose took all the titles and everything, and took all the have you signing for twenty five or thirty dollars, and you sign it, and you don't know what the hell you're signing. You sign everything away, you know. Just fortunately, you know. I was like Duke Ellington. I got all my tunes back. Yeah, but you're about the only one, aren't you? Yeah, I guess I am about the only one. I, the only I got one. all of my stuff back. The only one? Yeah. I Terrible. think so. Because that's all right, for example, that, that Arthur Crudup song. Yeah. Who's the title on that? I think he did, they, they gave it to Presley. And he was seven years old when Arthur Crudup recorded That's All Right. <laughs> he was seven <laughs> years old. He wrote the tune <laughs> when he was seven. He was yeah. a really bright guy. Yeah. I don't know. Better thing about your time now, I see you've got... Yeah, we're going to get out. Why?